What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, the lanterns, Brian, Green Lantern, Brian, is the character we haven't seen ever since the disastrous outing, and yet somewhat redemption was had or needed to be had, and, 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 and Ryan Reynolds took it upon himself to sort of apologize in his own way for doing that film. But outside of that, Brian, all we've heard is just rumors and possibilities and what will be possibly happening. Brian, what is the latest going on with the Green Lantern character or characters, uh, shows or movies or what's what's happening? Well, I think it's kind of exciting. Um, so there, this, this show's original, original incarnation in the prior version of HBO Max was called Green Lantern Corps and was supposed to be run by Greg Berlanti, who was sort of the TV TV mastermind behind Flash and Green Arrow and all those series over at CW. So that project died effectively. That's not the one that's being made. They actually even went so far as to cast a couple of lanterns at one point, lesser lanterns. But when James Gunn came in, they effectively said, yes, there will be a Green Lantern TV show, but we're doing our own, basically. And then we got word, obviously, Nathan Fillion is a Green Lantern in the Superman movie. So I believe okay. he's Guy Gardner. But that this new Lantern show, Jon Stewart, would be your your featured lantern. There was one, I remember there was one in the Berlanti version. I don't know if you remember this back in the day. I was terrified of this. Their version, I think, was going to ultimately lead to Jon Stewart and Hal Jordan in like a buddy cop on Earth lantern show. And I was just like, nah, no, no thank you. So that's all been scrapped. This is a John Stewart led show that may ha I'm sure Nathan Fillion would be involved, but there may be some other lanterns, but he's the lead lantern. Well, we got our writer's room for this show and they didn't mess around. So Tom King, obviously, who is sort of the one of the gurus with James Gunn in the room already for all these projects, notably, though, was the author of The Dark Side War, which was sort of his Green Lantern run um, in DC books. He is actually going to be writing for this show himself. And he brought in Damon Lindelof, hmm. who, of course, is the mastermind behind Lost, uh, movie Prometheus, Watchmen on HBO. And he brought in Chris Mundy, who's the right creator and showrunner for Ozark on Netflix. Ooh. They're not serious. messing around. They're not That's messing serious. around. They got some heavyweights to run the scripts and run the show for <laughs> Greenland. I would just say, like, when I saw these names, I was like, okay. I'm paying attention officially to yeah. lanterns. I am too. Those names are those. It's not even the names; it's the shows that they mentioned, Brian, which were all Ozark, Watchmen. Uh, what were the others? Lost. Yeah, you're winning Emmys. Uh, you're, yeah, that's, that's the level of television. You're bringing in <laughs> Emmy award winning talent. So, Brian, is there some sort of? Uh, time frame for when this is going to be starting up no but i would say you can sort of just rough outline say okay if we they've officially signed to write and here we are at summer of 2024 i think it's reasonable to think you could have you know scripts and some casting you know in place by early 2025 you're shooting in 2025 and you're out in 26 that would kind of be like that's probably if things go well like, I would say, like, could this be out at around the same time as Batman Part 2? Yeah, I think that's that's a reasonable timeline for this. But it just kind of opened my eyes to, oh, they these people took the call and were actually down to come do this. And, like, it, it's just like, it feels like they're going for a prestige show. You don't hire these guys to write some run-of-the-mill. Quite honestly, you don't hire them to write the kind of shows that Marvel seems to be putting out. You're hiring these guys to like make an event, right? Like Watchmen was an event on HBO. Lost was an event. Ozark was an event every season that it was out. That's what you're going for. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and I have and to you... believe they're going to space. <laughs> so. Yes. Yes. 
Because you can't have no Green Lancers dudes in regular jeans and sneakers mm-hmm. and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And every once in a while, come out with their power ring. Or they probably lost their power ring, Brian, and trying to get it back. Yeah. I ain't trying to see that, yo. <laughs> so, this is supposed to be a TV series? TV series, yeah. So that's the other interesting thing. Is there, you know, we've been having this discussion about like using high profile characters on the small screen, right? Over at Marvel, we were actually speculating about X Men. Like, here's an example. Here's here's maybe the test case. Like, they're gonna put a pretty high profile superhero and really launch it in TV form, not in movie form. I think it's worth a shot. <sighs> but. Here's the thing. It is worth a shot, Brian, because you're not going to get this opportunity to do something like this again. No. Totally agree. And you ever seen the movie Major League? I'm sure you have. It's one of my yeah. favorite mo- no uh, ma- uh, movies. And it's... And the lady is Zaslaw. The lady's trying to sell the team. <laughs> And these guys are just going to be like, yo, this is our only opportunity. Let's go do it. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's do what Chris Evans and, and the rest of those guys did when they set out to do Winter Soldier. What Adrian told Rocky and Rocky <laughs> too. Win. What are we waiting for? <laughs> That's what it is, Brian. <laughs> When you're given the opportunity, the opportunity to do something that you thought you'd never do, and probably you that you ha- probably have some connection to, right? Some nostalgic yeah. properties, whatever that you oh snap, this is something you know I never thought I'd get to do. Let's go do something dope, and 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 those are the sort of things, Brian, that I that I um. Uh, 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 look forward to seeing the the result of that 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 energy towards a project. Everything that DC announces and greenlights right now, you have to look at it as part of an all in bet because that's what yeah. it is. And I think when you're all in, that can lead to some good places. Like it leads to bad, but it can lead to some good places. Meaning, if you're going to put cash and you make a TV series in space, that automatically is expensive. We know that. Yeah. And if this thing is going to be 10 episodes, we don't know, but that just guess that it's 10 episodes. HBO shows typically have been. That's 250 million. Like you're going to have to put blockbuster level budget behind this to make it look good. But to me, unlike some of what Marvel did, that's going to go nowhere. I would argue if you can land a Green Lantern show, the payoff is not going to be, it could be in some subscribers because Max struggles for subscribers. But to me, the payoff is on the big screen because if the show hits, that character now can go places. That character can show up in your, if you can get to Justice League, can show up there and have a cachet. Maybe this gives you a relationship with, hey, Lindelof money. Maybe these guys can get involved with a movie too if it works. Like that's to me, there's other things here. This is not just about the ten, eight to ten episodes that we're going to get for the show. If they can hit with this, this can go back to the big screen, back to the small screen. And I think that's part of the idea. That's why Fillion is probably in Superman and then is probably in this show. Like they're blurring the lines a little bit between TV and movie, maybe even more, or at least experimenting in a way that we want Marvel maybe to try. Yeah. Um, like Marvel's success in TV has been like Loki had success on the big screen. We brought him to the small screen and he worked. You know, like Scarlet Witch had success on the big screen. You brought her to WandaVision. The show kind of worked. But we haven't seen we're starting with a major frontline character on the small screen and we're going to then try to launch him into the big screen. That was, I mean, and I think that's what this is. That's what I hope it, it is. That's the approach it should take, Brian, because we can't hope that a movie will be like oh snap now we got our we saw this dope movie now we gotta wait what two three years to see him again and perhaps we can build something here with a character that we can see more often like brian like i'll, I'll absolutely see an alan um a, a, a jack a, a reacher movie with this guy i would absolutely see a movie with him not impossible they would wrap it up that way yeah. Yeah. So 
this is the opportunity. This is the moment to do or try these things, Brian, because I don't think they have a lot of time to sort of get to the ultimate goal, Brian, uh, which would be Justice League. Yeah. So... See, to me, like, Creature Commandos might be great, but Creature Commandos is small scale. That's not leading you to the promised land. (laughs) All due respect to James Gunn. I know he loves that stuff. But a Green Lantern show that gets nominated for an Emmy in drama, that might get you somewhere you want to go. That's reaching, man. If they're trying is, to get but, to the end. <laughs> but if you're desperate, if you're all in, why not aim for that? Yeah, certainly. Certainly. Depends on this. I mean, it all depends on that story. I don't see, I'm not well versed in Green Lantern to really sort of. Uh, Say uh, to say which storyline could sort of get you there. There's nothing that come, pops into my mind, but can they do it? And will they tr- attempt to do that? That is the hope that they attempt to do that, and not just do some goofy stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because then that would be a problem. I mean, these guys don't. I mean, nothing of these guys resume no, uh, is again, silly. Yeah, exa- exactly, exactly. So yeah, all the names that you p- put up there s- leads towards excellence. And prime time, so we'll see. James Gunn also said, by the way, Superman's more than half done at this point. So to me, that Batman teaser that came out, the first fandom, that movie was 25% done when they put that out. I'm just, I'm just pointing that out to you people as we head toward the Comic-Con that James Gunn has told you he did nothing's happening at, that nothing's going to, like, this movie's more than half done. They have enough to make a teaser. Not that far out. If they want. I'm not saying they will, but I'm just saying they can. In case he does give us something to look at as a teaser, what are your expectations? Are you expecting to have that same sort of uh, reaction or feeling that you had when you first saw the Batman trailer, Brian? And to that carry over to this movie comes out. Is is that what you're expecting? If he does it at Comic-Con or at this WB event that's supposed to be coming or whatever, I think the short answer is yes, in the sense of I think it'll be 60 seconds. It'll be short. And I think it'll be all about tone. And that's really what the Batman teaser was to me. It was like a complete sort of reset of your concept of tone around Batman. And it was amazing. And I think that you would barely see Superman in the trailer. Maybe one shot at the very end, a flash of him doing something. But I really think it would be much more about like, this is my metropolis. Here is the feel of a little dialogue, maybe some narration just to set the mood for what I want to tell. A visual quick cuts of some key faces that you need to see. Maybe it's even just a conversation. Like I was thinking the other day, it's funny, bringing, I was thinking about the Penguin teaser where you see Colin Farrell just sitting in the chair talking to someone else, right? That's all about tone. And I feel like you could see something similar. You could see Clark and Lois just having like a conversation. And then or you like- could, or, or you could see Superman saving a cat. Yeah, exactly. Or exactly. Maybe that's the flash they show him of him. is like him yeah. doing something very every day. Yeah. But that's what I feel like you just, those 60 seconds, the idea is that you're transported. And this is what you're supposed to feel emotionally. And that sets you up for what's coming. Because the Batman teaser paid that off, right? Yeah. Some teasers and trailers tr- try to trick you into what the mm. movie is supposed to be and feel like. That teaser was very much designed to tell you what was coming. We're going to hammer you for three hours <laughs> with this type of darkness. Yeah, yeah. And I think Superman would be kind of the opposite, right? This is, this is the lightness, but maybe the humanity without the complete comedy that we want to have you feel. I don't assume that in that teaser we'll get a glimpse of the music that'll be his theme music. No, not a chance. Not a chance it's been written. Mm. I'm actually hopeful he does not use the John Williams Something. theme. I think that would be a mistake. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to get over that. That, don't, that, 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 that's, that belongs to the one and only, and that's it. That's it. Yeah. You know, uh, we got to move on from that. But let's see if he can outdo. Because I like uh, Hans Zimmer, Zack Snyder joint. I like yeah, that I did. joint. It's good music. It is, it is very good music. 
it, for, the, um, for that film. So I'm just saying to people, nobody's talking about it. But when he put that tweet out, because James Gunn never puts out stuff by accident, I'm officially on lookout that that first little bit of footage might show up sooner than people think. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of James Gunn's uh, Green Lantern show. He certainly has some heavy hitters to give us some sort of a serious show, Brian. It certainly brings about curiosity as to the type of show you would expect from a show about Green Lanterns, right? We don't know what exactly what we're going to be sort of looking for in terms of uh, plot and stakes and all of that stuff. But um, there, there is a level of seriousness based on the individuals who are making this. So let's see. Let's see. There's certainly a lot of curiosity. And uh, this is their shot. This is their shot to do something... I'll use the word, the, the, the word that the first time I heard these words, and I had heard these words before, Brian, but not like that. Mr. Han. Extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're looking for. And that's what um, it sounds like they have, Brian. So we'll see. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time in the Nerdy Report.